Hi, welcome to my classroom. I'd like to show you how to transfer your design from paper onto rug backing. I've got a cotton monk's cloth backing here and also a linen backing called primitive rug hooking linen. If you have a different kind of backing, that's okay. The same techniques will apply. Some people feel confident drawing directly onto their backing and if you feel that way, that's fine. You can draw right on there. If you're drawing on your backing, make sure to use a permanent marker and don't use a colored marker. They will run. I've seen colored Sharpies run and it's a terrible thing. So make sure to use a permanent marker. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't always feel comfortable drawing right on the backing. So go ahead and draw on paper, then you can erase, you can get it just the way you want it. And I'm going to show you how to transfer in three different ways from your paper. The first is on a light table, also called a light box. I'm also going to show you how to transfer on a window. And thirdly, I'm going to show you how to transfer using the iron-on transfer pen. The most important thing to keep in mind is that with punch needle rug hooking, you are working on the back side of your rug, so your pattern has to be backwards. I've used a pattern for you with lettering to give you the idea. So your cat pattern, you would want to flip when you're tracing it so that it says tack, not cat. So keep that in mind, and I will show you now how to use the light box. Here we are in the workroom at the Oxford Rug Hooking School. We have two large light tables for our students to trace their patterns and also to trace the large McAdoo rugs patterns. The cat that we're working on is also a, a McAdoo pattern. Before we transfer our cat pattern onto monk's cloth, I just want to show you a few tips for drawing on monk's cloth, and this would be just the same with linen. When you're drawing a curve or a round shape for any area of your rug or the outside of your rug, you can just draw a nice curve. If you have a straight line though, you want to go with the weave of the cloth. It's got basically just horizontal and vertical lines and in between the monk's cloth threads there's a channel and you want to, instead of drawing your line with a ruler, which could be a little bit off with the weave, you want to put your pen right in that channel and if you hold down here, if you just put a little bit of pressure right there and pull your pen will go right in that channel and you'll get a beautiful perfectly straight line. The nice thing about this is if you want to get a perfect right angle, now you just can go this way, like that, and look at the nice straight line that gives you. If you have a border, it's kind of neat. You can count threads. You can go uh, leave two holes out, and look at that. You get nice, beautiful parallel lines for your border. So that will give you wonderful straight lines to draw with and it will allow you to work with the holes in your monk's cloth. This is a regular Sharpie. They actually call it a fine point Sharpie. Some people prefer an ultra fine Sharpie. They find that it stays in the grooves better. And it looks like that. My personal favorite is a 3B pencil, a soft lead pencil. I find it just stays in the channel beautifully. Now you may not be able to see this very well, but when I turn off the light table, you'll see it um, wonderfully. So this is my favorite because not only is it the easiest to stay in the channel, I also um, can see my my lines much better to punch with. If I have this thick black line, it's kind of hard for me to see the holes. I've got my cat pattern on the light table and I've flipped it, so note that the pattern is backwards. We've got tack instead of cat, which is just what we want. Now we're going to basically just trace this pattern onto monk's cloth. So we're going to put the monk's cloth on top and of course you can't see it, but when you turn on the light, hit it Heidi! <laughs> you can see the pattern just fine. 
I like to center my pattern in the monk's cloth, and you can do that with a ruler, but I usually just use my hands to measure. And that looks just fine. Once you get it centered, you want to make sure that the weave of your monk's cloth lines up with the lines of your drawing, and you'll be able to see that when you're right on top of it. So I'm just going to wiggle it a little bit to get it nice and straight. And that looks fine. I'm going to tape it down with um, blue painter's tape. And I'm going to start by drawing the outer line of the border. And I'm just going to put my 3B pencil right in the groove. And I'm not so much drawing as just pulling the line, pulling in the line. And you just go till you get to the stopping point there. And if you put a little pressure on, it gives you something to pull against. So think more about pulling your pencil than drawing a line, if that makes sense. Now because monk's cloth is stretchy, it's wiggled a little bit with the line, drawn line below, so I'm just going to make sure it's lined up. Just going to check again to make sure it's all on the lines. And with any luck, these two points will meet. There we go. So I'm going to straighten it up again, and then to do the inner border line, I think what I'm going to do is count holes, and I've got one, two, three, four rows of empty holes. I'm going to go right in that line there, and just do the same thing, and it'll give me that nice parallel line. There, so there's the border done, and now we're ready to trace the inside of the pattern. I'm going to do that with my fine point sharpie, and you're just going to go over everything you see. One thing that irritates me is you get these little globs on your um, Sharpie, so you can use a little tissue. I've got a scrap of monk's cloth over here, so I'm just going to wipe it off on that. For the lettering, I want a nice straight line in my lettering, and the holes are all lined up nicely, so I'm going to use the weave of the backing to get that nice and straight. There, looks like we're good to go. If you find when you're drawing that it's hard for you to see what's underneath, don't be afraid to lift it up and give a little peek to see what's going on under there. And when I'm done, the last thing I like to do is to turn off the lights and the light table, and then you can tell if you've missed anything. If you're tracing a pattern onto linen or another darker rug backing, I just want to show you what that looks like. We'll turn the light on so you can see. The pattern does show up just fine. You're just going to trace it the exact same way that I showed you with the monk's cloth. I'm upstairs in our dye classroom, and we have a nice French door here that I'm going to trace on. 
If you don't have a big window or you want to try something different, you could also use a glass coffee table and put lamps under it for a light table, or if you have a glass table of any kind, you could put lamps under it. I have one friend who has a dining room table that has leaves in the middle that come out um, to make the table larger or smaller, and she actually put a storm window in there with lights underneath it and used that. You can use cold frame, glass, you know, get creative. Um, the window works really well. There's a few things to think about. Uh, overcast or sunny days are fine. You want to make sure that your pattern is backwards, just like on the light table. So we've got tack here instead of cat. Um, I like to use wide painter's tape because the monk's cloth is stretchy, so I tape it very securely to make sure that it's not going to move. I am not very good at drawing my outline straight lines while it's hanging like this. So what I did is I actually put this up on the window and I marked my corners so I could see them. And then I took it off the window and just drew these lines on, on a nice flat table. So I did this ahead of time so you wouldn't have to wait and watch me do that. Um, when I put it back on the window, as I say, it is a little bit stretchy, so I like to tape down the edges. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I can't even see the cat. But look what happens when you press on it. See how you can see those lines? So I'm going to go ahead and tape it with more of this wide tape. And I've already got the border done. The border lines up nicely, so all I'm going to do now is trace the cat. And then I'll just have a look off the window to make sure I have everything on there. And that looks fine. I used a window for many, many years before I got a light table, and I find it works very well. I um, did very large patterns, too. So the only issue really is the stretching of the backing, and if you use lots of tape, that isn't really a problem. If you're using linen, you'll just go through the same process. It um, may look like you can't see the cat pattern, but look what happens when you press on it. It shows up just fine. Actually, I think it might even show up a little bit better because the holes in the linen are larger. If you're using a different kind of backing, honestly, I've never tried using a, a window or a light table on other backings, but uh, give it a go, and I hope that it works for you. To transfer your pattern with an iron-on pen, I really suggest the Sulky brand iron-on transfer pen. It's what we use here at the school because I've tried a lot and I find it to be the most successful. If you can't get one of these, there are iron-on pencils out there and also iron-on crayons that work as well. You're going to need a few things. One is a nice hard surface to iron on. You'd think you'd want to use an ironing board, but actually a soft surface doesn't work as well. So use a, a utility table. Obviously don't use any fancy furniture to iron on. You don't want to hurt your furniture. Also don't iron on top of your kitchen counter, even though it's a hard surface, because you could melt the glue that's keeping your countertop on. I like to use foil on top of my table, not only to protect the table, but also because it helps conduct the heat, so it helps the pen to work better. And I like to just use a really cheap iron. Um, you can see that it does gunk up your iron over time. Hundreds of students have transferred their pattern with this iron. So if you have a, a good iron that you're transferring with, clean it off uh, right away or it, it will build up. But I really recommend a very inexpensive iron. So we're ready to go. This is how I set it up. I like to have my hard table then with foil on top with the shiny side facing up and then my monk's cloth and on top of that will be my paper pattern. One thing that I like to always do is to draw my outline border first. 
the way I showed you, then it's just a little bit easier to do it that way. If you were to try and iron on that line, it's hard to get it to line up with the weave, so I draw that on first. It's very, very important when you trace your pattern to do it frontwards, because what's going to happen is you're going to trace with ink and put your pattern on top, and your pattern will wind up being backwards on the monk's cloth, which is just what you want. I don't like to draw right on my uh, nice clean paper pattern. Instead what I do is I put a piece of tracing paper on top of that and just use that for my iron-on transfer pattern. So I'm just going to tape the tracing paper on top of my paper pattern. There, now I don't have to worry about it moving. To use the iron-on pen, you just need to shake it well. And then to get the ink running, it presses down and you just want to hold it down for about five seconds until the ink starts flowing. And if you get a big bloop of ink like that, it's actually good, then you know it's got a lot of ink in it. So once you've got the ink flowing, you're just going to trace your cat and your lettering don't have to do the border because you've already done that. So we're just going to go right over the drawing. I like to start from the top and work down so it doesn't smudge on my hand. I'm tracing my pattern from my paper pattern onto tissue paper on top of the monk's cloth as you can see, but you don't have to do that. You can do that on a regular table if you prefer. I've got my iron-on pen all drawn on my tracing paper. I'm just going to take it off of here, get rid of the tape. And this is what we're going to work with. Remember that you want your pattern to be backwards for punching, so we're going to flip this over and iron the pattern on so it says tack instead of cat. You want to center it just the way you want it. And then tape it again so it doesn't move. I love this painter's tape because it doesn't stick to the paper. It peels right off when you're done. Okay, we're ready to iron. I like to iron with my iron set on high, but I know this iron. Test your iron. Test on a corner of the backing to see how it works. I have mine set on high and I press for 25 seconds. So do a little test in the corner. I'm just going to do a section here to show you. And I'm pressing down with a little bit of pressure. And I'm just going to do 25 seconds. So let's see how that came out. That worked pretty well. And I missed a few spots, but I can just go over that with a Sharpie. If you want to, you can go over it again with your iron, but that's good enough for me. One of the main reasons I like to use tissue paper is because after I check it, I can put it back down right in the same spot. If I was using a regular paper, you couldn't see through it to know where to put it down. So I'm just going to iron the rest. Let's have a look. I think that looks fine. Those lines are nice and dark. One thing to keep in mind with this is that over time these lines will fade, whether they're on the frame without using it or just with your hand rubbing on it. They will get fainter, so go over it at this point with a permanent marker to make sure that it doesn't wear away. However you transfer your pattern, keep in mind that you always want your design to be backwards.